Hi, I'm Daryl Cagle, and this is our first podcast, our first Cagle cast. Uh, we're going to talk about editorial cartoons and cartoonists, their art, their issues, and uh, stuff in the news. And I think it's going to be great. We're going to do it fairly often, and I hope that you'll su- click to subscribe wherever you're looking at this podcast. Today, we're going to talk through the top 10 cartoons of the week. This is the cartoon that is tied for number one. And uh, we we run a small business that syndicates editorial cartoons to about 500 newspapers. And we keep very good statistics on what cartoons the editors choose to print. And that's what this is. Uh, this is the cartoons that are most reprinted. It may not be the cartoons that you like best or the cartoons that are best, but they're the cartoons that editors wanted to put in their newspapers. This first one is by Dave Womond, uh, who is just a brilliant cartoonist. He draws two comic strips. He does greeting cards and calendars, and he does four editorial cartoons with us every week that are always among the most reprinted cartoons. Uh, He is just great. Um, And this one is tied for number one. I'm going to read through these because this is also an audio podcast. And if you're not seeing the images, you need to go to my blog at DarylKagel.com. You'll be able to see uh, the video podcast and the uh, all of the images that we talk about during the podcast. And soon we'll have KagelCast.com up. But of course, we're just doing our first podcast right now. And uh, we don't have it quite going yet, but it will be going soon and it will be going frequently. So... Dave's cartoon has the family at the kitchen table, and the header reads, If we ran our household budgets like they run the government finances. And Mom says, Oh my God, our credit card bill is through the ceiling. And Dad says, No problem, hon. I'll just raise the ceiling. We'll just print more money. And the son who's eating his breakfast cereal says, The only catch is the printer ink. It's $7 billion, Dad. And... I think that's funny. He's got a dog looking through the, the uh, to the reader. I, it's a hilarious cartoon. This is the number two. It was not really a number two. It's tied for number one. We just have it in the number two spot. It's by Jeff Caterba. Jeff Caterba had a fantastic week last week. He's got three cartoons in the top ten. Um, and uh, that's just unbelievable. Jeff drew for many years for the Omaha World Herald, and uh, editors love his stuff. Here he's got Uncle Sam, and the red ink ceiling is crushing down on him. Uncle Sab thinks, as if it's not bad enough, we're up against the debt ceiling, and the politics saw is cutting a hole in the floor for him to fall through. This one is, uh, this one and the last cartoon are very indicative of what editors for newspapers want these days. They want cartoons that don't portray a strong left or right point of view, but that uh, are something that are kind of about the news, but nobody's going to disagree with it. What the readers like are cartoons that uh, uh, reinforce their existing point of view. Um, Liberals want liberal cartoons, conservatives want conservative cartoons, and they don't want to see what they disagree with. So I can kind of see where the editors are coming from and how they have to uh, find that place where nobody disagrees. But, you know, that's not the kind of cartoon that cartoonists really want to draw. We want to bash people over the head with our, our strong point of view. And so editors are a constant source of frustration for us. This is the kind of stats we keep. We keep very good stats on all of the cartoons. And we know just what the editors are printing. And uh, we, we track what the most popular cartoons are. Here you can see the tie at the top between the two cartoons you just saw, Womond and Koturba. Uh, the next cartoon is by our conservative cartoonist, Gary McCoy, who um, has drawn a cartoon that is not conservative, so it uh, shows up in the top ten. Uh, the lady is talking to her uh, presumably husband who's looking at a laptop showing Facebook 70s memories, and he says... I find it odd that so many people use the most high-tech social media platform just to look longingly at photos of life before social media. This is another one that newspaper editors are going to like because there's no left and there's no right, and Grandma's going to like it because this is what she thinks about social media. And, uh, uh, you know, good cartoon for newspapers. I see why it's number three. 
This one is number four. It's Jeff Katerba's second of three in the top 10, which is, again, just so crazy impressive. You know, we, we do about 120 cartoons a week. We've got 60 cartoonists in our group. And uh, to have one cartoonist claim three spots in the top 10, that's just, that's just incredible. But you can see why this one did, because it criticizes both President Biden and ex-President Trump equally. They're driving down the road to 2024, and they're stopped by the FBI at a classified document check, and both of them have their boxes of uh, classified documents flying in the air. Trump has more, but uh, uh, Trump is driving a, a golf cart, and Biden's only got as many classified documents as fit on his bike. Anyway, um, they're criticized equally. The pox on both your houses kinds of cartoons are uh, something the editors like. This one is by R.J. Matson, cartoonist who draws from Maine. He worked for many years for the St. Louis Post-Dispatch. Just a brilliant cartoonist. He's, he's drawn for everybody. He's drawn for The New Yorker. He's drawn for Mad Magazine. Uh, R.J. is just great. This cartoon is kind of interesting because uh, R.J. submitted it on the 22nd, and we just had the big shooting in Los Angeles. And uh, then the next day, there was another giant shooting, also in California. And uh, that was, uh, uh, he had to draw a correction because he needed another blood spatter. You know, that uh, that's pretty rare. Most of our corrections are due to uh, misspellings rather than mass shootings. Uh, anyway, this is a great cartoon. It, it does fill up the month. Here is Jeff Katerba's third, third cartoon in the top 10. And you've got mom and son. Son's got classified documents in his hands and poking out of his backpack. Mom says, and you're certain there's no homework in your backpack? And son says, I'm certain, but I did find these classified documents. Um, again, no left and right. It's about the news, but there's nothing to disagree with. Lots of classified document problems here. We're getting a whole lot of cartoons about how there's lots and lots of classified documents that are poorly stored. So, uh, of course, editors like this. this Jeff, had a, Jeff had a great week. This one is by Guy Parsons. And like Dave Woman, Guy Parsons is from Canada, but we uh, put him on our site as being uh, uh, an American cartoonist because cartoons don't travel well over borders. And editors, if they see that it's a can American editors, if they see that it's a Canadian cartoonist, they're just uh, cartoons going to be invisible to them. So uh, we call them American, and they they do a great impression of American cartoonists. Uh, you wouldn't know that these guys are not American cartoonists. So this one's got things that editors love. It's got the donkey and the elephant fighting each other rather equally. Um, and it's got a groundhog in it for Groundhog Day. And editors love holidays. They love Groundhog Day. And what are you not going to like about this cartoon um, from an editor's perspective? From a cartoonist's perspective, you could you might argue, eh, not really taking a position on an issue but uh you know we have a lot of cartoons that take positions on issues and they don't get into the top 10. so uh this one was a successful one for guy this one is a cartoon that i drew nine years ago and you know the the news doesn't change much at that time nine years ago they were still arguing in congress about the debt ceiling and uh, uh and it was a, a it was a, a uh, an off the cliff kind of issue like it is right now. This is a uh, I've added a Republican elephant and a Democrat donkey to the famous painting Nighthawks by Edward Hopper that shows an old uh, an old uh, coffee shop in an urban setting and it's kind of bleak and the. Uh, the elephant says, I refuse to pay for the hamburger I ordered and ate. And the Democrat says, just put my hamburger on my tab. Um, things don't uh, really change. Uh, this is a kind of a metaphor that uh, lots of editorial cartoonists like to use. Famous artwork, um, famous identifiable 
is that you twist with a transformative message to say what you want to say. And uh, that's one of the great benefits of being an editorial cartoonist is that we're able to work from a palette of these metaphors. In France, they call them clichés. We can, we can use this palette of clichés to uh, make our, uh, our points much more clearly and effectively and, and get a mood, like I'm going for the mood in this uh, kind of a bleak, unproductive mood, uh, urban, uh, dark. Uh, and I, I think that's fun. So uh, I, I, I took the, the, the Edward Hopper painting as a, a, a mood for the point that I was trying to make. And uh, in France, they call cartoons like this borrowings. I don't think we have a particular word for it here. Um, it's just uh, lovely that editorial cartoonists can use uh, copyrighted and trademarked images from others if we follow the rules. One of the rules is that you're supposed to give an acknowledgement to the uh, copyright or trademark holder. You see in the lower left corner, it says apologies to Edward Hopper. You've probably seen these uh, little notes, apologies to this and apologies to that in editorial cartoons elsewhere. And uh, it's just there to acknowledge uh, the copyright or trademark holder. Uh, of course, Edward Hopper is no longer alive for me to apologize to him, but it's uh, a required acknowledgement. And uh, that's all for the good. Could be thanks to Edward Hopper. It, uh, the acknowledgement is not that well refined, but it's kind of grown to be apologies too. Uh, anyway, I enjoyed this cartoon. It performed very well nine years ago and uh, also last week at number eight. Oops. Sorry about that. This one is by Rivers. Rivers is an interesting cartoonist for us. Rivers draws anonymously. We don't tell anyone who Rivers is. And uh, that's uh, around the world. There are uh, anonymous cartoonists who crop up once in a while. And uh, around the world, I can I can see a good point to that because, uh, you know, it can be dangerous to be an editorial cartoonist around the world. Cartoonists get murdered like the Charlie Hebdo cartoonists. They get uh, harassed by their governments, thrown in jail, beaten up. Um, you know, the powers that be around the world don't like editorial cartoonists. We're, we're lucky to live in America and have a, a safe environment for for editorial cartoonists, but I think that uh, I think that it would be good for editorial cartoonists around the world to have the option of drawing anonymously, and uh, that would, you know, that would free people up who are under threat to to say what they think, or for any other reason they choose to be anonymous. I'm okay with it, and uh, so we do that here, and we're in a unique situation being a middleman between the cartoonists and the publishers to be able to do that. Uh, it is unusual here though, uh, and I, I uh, was concerned a little bit at first when we took on Rivers whether uh, editors would not like that he's anonymous. And we got a couple of complaints, but uh, by and large it's fine, and Rivers is uh, very often in the top ten. His or her cartoons are, uh, are quite popular. And uh, so we, uh, we're happy with it, and uh, I'm fine with anonymous cartoonists. So here's a, a big, nasty Viking holding two big axes and looking threatening, and he's got A on it, I on his tunic, uh, artificial intelligence. And there are two little businessmen standing next to him. One of them says, relax, our technocratic overlords claim he's here to make our jobs easier and that the axes are purely decorative. And that's cute. I like that. There's no real left or right to be disturbed by in complaining about artificial intelligence. Uh, Rivers draws lots of cartoons that are very conservative. Um, and, you know, the conservative newspapers and the liberal newspapers, they you would think that uh, conservative newspapers would dr print more conservative cartoons, but they don't. They print the same cartoons. They print the cartoons that nobody's going to disagree with. Um, and that's kind of funny. At the top of our website, we post 
conservative cartoons uh, because we were getting lots of complaints from conservative editors that most of the cartoonists are liberal. And, uh, you know, people notice the cartoons they disagree with much more than they appreciate the cartoons that they agree with. And so these conservative editors were uh, finding that the conservative cartoons were invisible to them, but the, the liberal ones were really uh, annoying. And we'd get uh, angry uh, responses and threats to quit and all kinds of stuff. So um, I put that special uh, conservative cartoons at the top, and uh, we, we pop conservative cartoons in there uh, frequently, including lots of cartoons by Rivers, and that has uh, quieted the the angry conservative editors. Uh, now the cartoons have suddenly become visible. Still most of the cartoons are liberal, but at least now these are, are visible. So, and here's the last one. This is by Chris Wyant, uh, another absolutely great cartoonist. Uh, he's a New Yorker cartoonist and he draws two a week for us. One of them is also for the Boston Globe. And uh, this composition of this cartoon uh, makes me laugh. I think it's just it's a funny composition. There's Uncle Sam, and he's on the head of the elephant, and uh, the elephant, the front of the elephant looks like he's about to fall off on the edge of a cliff, and uh, the elephant is holding a sign that says, Fiscal Cliff, watch your step. And the elephant says, Don't worry, I'll make sure you land on your entitlements. And I, I think that just, and it just looks funny. The composition makes me laugh. Um, so, hey, I think it's, I think that's a great one, and uh, now we've gone through all 10, and I'm hoping that I did it in 10 minutes, but it looks more like I took 13 minutes. So, hey, um, we're going to be, oops, we're going <laughs> to, I'm going to get better at all these controls uh, as we do more of these, and uh, we should be doing a lot of them, so be sure to check into DarylKagel.com, check into KagelCast.com when we've got that up and going, and uh, click to subscribe, get our free newsletter at Kegel.com, and it's also cool. Thanks for watching.